tonight. Uh, the Lord gave me Psalm 35. We're going we're gonna to read through Psalm 35 together. Begins by David. Adonai, oppose those who oppose me. Fight against those who fight against me. Grasp your shield and protective gear and rise to my defense. We got to stop because everyone claims that, don't they? How do you know that you can rightfully claim that? I'm so glad you asked. The way we can be sure that we know him is if we are obeying his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, but isn't obeying his commands is a liar. The truth is not in him. But if someone keeps doing what he says, then truly love for God has been brought to its goal in him. This is how we are sure that we are united with him. A person who claims to be continuing in union with him ought to conduct his life the way he did, Yeshua did. That's 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. We go over that a lot. In fact, we'll go over it again tonight. <laughs> Listen, if we aren't conducting our life the way that he did, if we're not seeking to observe his commandments because we get to, we don't get to claim this. We don't get to claim Psalm 35, verse 1. If we aren't conducting our lives the way Yeshua did, if we are not being salt, what does it mean to be salt? It means to be living out your life according to his covenant. What does it mean to be light? It means to be living out your life like Yeshua. If we are not salt and we are not light, how can we claim no weapon formed against me shall prosper? But if we belong to him, we will want to obey him. If we have tasted and seen that he is good, we will want to obey him. We will get our tzitzit out in the morning and as we're tying them on saying, praise God, I get to do this. This is something I can do. One little thing that I get to do. And then later in the day as we look at our miserable failings, And we take off our, our garment. And we undo our seat seat from it as we're getting ready for bed. We say, well, at least there's one less thing I have to answer for. <laughs> Keep it simple. Keep it simple. God, brandish spear and battle axe against my pursuers. Let me hear you say, I am your salvation. Let me ask you, by a raise of hands, who could stand to hear the voice of God say, no, no, this one's mine, I am his salvation. Who could stand to hear that? Oi! By the way, growing up, that was one of the ways we knew we were Jews, was mom, when she'd get really exasperated with us, not only would she say, ach, oh brother, she'd also say, oi. <laughs> that and the plastic on the furniture. Uh, any <laughs> but nobody made chicken foot soup like mom. May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to confusion. Did you know you get to pray this? That's not nice. I'm not talking about being nice. I'm talking about being godly. I'm talking about justice. No, no, no. If you are ordering your life the way Yeshua ordered his life, if you are fearing God, if you have intimacy with God, I'm talking real intimacy, not conjured intimacy, not the intimacy that I'm going to tell you all about how holy I am, not that, but legitimate intimacy. 
with God. Then you are able to pray over those who hate you because why do they hate you? Because they hate him. You are able to pray against God's enemies and say, those who seek my life be disgraced and put to confusion. But again, it's conditional, isn't it? It hinges on something. It requires you to belong to Yeshua. It requires you to be sanctified to God through Yeshua and his commandments. Wait a minute, you're getting legalist. No, I said sanctified, not saved. Rabbi Tokajer wrote something to the effect of legalism is self-righteousness in the wrappings of artificial holiness. The man's brilliant. No, I did not say salvation. To say that we have to be jumping through hoops to get salvation, that's legalism. And it's amazing how many who claim to be grace will say, you don't speak. You don't speak in tongues, Rabbi? Well, you, you can't be saved. Rabbi, you don't do communion? You don't do this? You, oh, you can't be saved. Wait a minute, who's the legalist? Shabbat Shalom. Who's the legalist? No, I'm saying now that we are saved, now we get to obey. Now we need to be moving towards sanctification in that process of becoming more like Yeshua. And if we're becoming more like Yeshua, we will be keeping his commandments. Why? Because he says, if you love me, you will obey me. May those who are plotting harm for me be repulsed and put to shame. May they be like chaff before the wind, with the angel of Adonai to drive them on. It's very interesting to me that God picked this psalm for tonight. I did not pick it. Because what do we have in our study tonight? We're studying the Torah Parsha. We have the study of Balak and Bilam, right? At one point, Bilam is rushing off on, on his donkey to try to pull a fast one on God. By the way, can you pull a fast one with God? Can you manipulate God? Can you trick him? No. 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 You can lie to the world around you. You can lie to yourself. You cannot lie to God. The world around you can believe your lie. You can believe your lie. But God sees right through it. So as he's rushing off to not go curse Israel, yeah, right. Scripture says over and over, he was after the money, which meant he was going to go and curse. As he was going out there, what happened? The angel of the Lord was blocking his way and was ready to take his head. Right? May the angel of Adonai to drive them on, the chaff. What is the chaff driven on towards? Destruction. The chaff is driven away from the grain. It's separated from the fruit by the wind. And then what is? It's collected and burned up in the fire. May their way be dark and slippery and the angel of Adonai to pursue them. Ooh, that's not, that's not nice. David, you need to read some chicken soup for the soul, David. No, no. David was the man after God's own heart, remember? This, this psalm that he wrote was so beautiful and accurate that it was deemed inspired by the patriarchs to the point that it was included and canonized into Scripture. 
Isn't it beautiful when we start to see how we can actually start praying in some instances? I was speaking to a, a good friend of mine. He's a warrior. Uh, he deals a lot with, he and his group go after these human trafficking rings. And not in the courts. <laughs> And in one of their last trainings, one of the leaders asked these warriors, how should we be praying? How do you think we should be praying for these people that we are going against? And my friend said, well, a rabbi friend of mine told me Psalm 69. A rabbi friend told me, God, destroy them. Confuse them, confound them, wipe them out. They're harming the innocent. And that team that was practicing said, Amen, Amen, let's pray. We get to do that, people. There are people in this world that do not need a track. They need to be taken out. Their hearts are hard. They have hardened their hearts to the point that God has said, all right, I'm giving you over. Can a miracle take place? Oh, yeah. But apart from a miracle taking place, some of those people need to go. Are we still on YouTube or did they kick us off? <laughs> May their way be dark and slippery and the angel of Adonai to pursue them. Can you imagine the fear knowing that the angel of God is coming after you? For unprovoked, they hid their net over a pit. Unprovoked, they dug it for me. Unprovoked. But these people with malice aforethought have sought to trap me. May destruction come over him unawares. May the net he concealed catch himself. May he fall into it and be destroyed. Then I will be, what? Joyful in Adonai. That's not nice. It's called justice. It's called righteous justice. We get to rejoice in that, people. I will rejoice in his salvation. All my bones will say, who is like you? Who can rescue the weak from those stronger than they? The poor and the needy from those who exploit them. You see, my friend, the warrior, this is the prayer of his team. This is what those men pray. Malicious witnesses come forward asking me things about which I know nothing. They repay me evil for good. Anyone experience that? It's, it's called life. And it only gets more intense and worse the more you press in and start trying to serve the Lord. You see, a lot of Christianity is just floating along and it's nice and they're saying, oh, it's wonderful. The doors are open, the window, and we're going through claiming. It's my best life now. Listen, if, if, if your walk with the Lord is a vacation, then at best, you're sitting way back by the supply depot. We're not called to be there. We're called to be in the front line trenches where there's lice, there's disease, there's lack of food, there's lack of good water. In fact, where there is water, there's usually cholera. Anyone study the trenches of World War I? You want to talk about frontline battle, and what's the enemy doing? 
They're sniping at you every time they see the top of your head. They're trying to blow it off. They're lobbing grenades over at you. They're sending artillery barrages at you. That's where we're supposed to be hanging out. And what are we supposed to be doing there? Charging the gates of hell. When our Yeshua says, up and over, we're supposed to be climbing over and charging that no man's land. Charging what? The gates of hell that are stationary objects. But what do we do? We're sitting back at the supply depot trying to break into another can of spam that the enemy put in the supplies to defile us before our God. And then we say, no, it's okay, it's okay. All food is clean. That's not food. On many, many levels. <laughs> I'll never be allowed in Hawaii. <laughs> they repay me evil for good. It makes me feel desolate as a parent bereaved. But I when they were ill, wore sackcloth. I put myself out and fasted. I can pray that what I prayed for them might also happen to me. I behaved as if I would for my friend or my brother. I bent down in sorrow as if mourning my, bro my mother. Can anyone else say, yeah, I've done this? And after you've been turned on and attacked, when Moshe said to the Lord, when Korah and the boys were coming at him, Lord, don't accept their grain offering. It's the first thing that comes to my mind. I didn't take anything from them. I gave to them. I poured myself out. I denied myself fasting and praying. But when I stumble, they gather in glee. They gather against me and strike me unawares. They tear me apart unceasingly. With, godly, with ungodly mocking and grimacing, they grind their teeth at me. Oddly enough, these people actually do that. You can see that on their faces. You can see it manifest and you say, whoa. Adonai, how much longer will you look on? Rescue me from their assaults. Save the one life I have from the lions. Then we go into the next gear. We've gone through the power band of our suffering and we have to change up to the next gear. And it says, I will give thanks in the great assembly What's the great assembly? The gathering of the nation of Israel before their God to worship him. For us, when is that going to take place? When the new Jerusalem is brought down and we are gathered before our king to worship him. I will give you praise among huge crowds of people. I can't wait to do that. Don't let those who are wrongfully my enemies gloat over me. And those who hate me unprovoked, don't let them smirk at me. See, these are things God's concerned about. Oh, Lord, would you help me get a better parking spot? What, are you kidding me? Don't you realize there are people that are mocking your God? That are gloating over you and smirking at you? For they don't speak words of peace, but devise ways to deceive the peaceful of the land. You see, it's not even just about you. They don't want to just see your destruction. They want the destruction of those who are at peace with God. They want to corrupt everybody. They want to go in and get their little fingers in and corrupt all of God's people. Why? Who's their father? 
What does their father seek to do? To destroy and kill, right? They shout to accuse me. Aha, aha, we saw you with our own eyes. You saw them, Adonai. Don't stay silent. Adonai, don't stay far away from me. Wake up. Get up, my God, my Lord. Defend me and my cause. Give judgment for me, Adonai, my God, as your righteousness, what? Demands. Whose righteousness? God's righteousness demands it. Now let me ask you this. From man's perspective, David wrote, Wake up, get up, my God, my Lord. Is God sleeping? Never sleeps, doesn't need to. Does God distracted? Is God distracted and have to be reminded to put his eyes on you? No. But sometimes he is silent. Sometimes he is quiet while we're going through these things. And he's just quietly giving you the strength to take that next breath. Sounds like the whole last year, doesn't it, babe? (laughs) Who is like our God? You see, when we try to, when we're with a, a loved one or a friend who is grieving, we're always thinking about what we should be saying. Maybe you just put your arms around them and be quiet and just be with them and hold them up. Let them use your jacket for a handkerchief. Whatever needs to be done. Because isn't that sometimes how God works with us? He's just quietly holding us up and letting us sob our guts out. Don't let them gloat over me. Don't let them say to themselves, aha, we got what we wanted, or say, we swallowed them up. May those who gloat over my distress be disgraced and humiliated. Why? Because his distress is unjust. And if you're gloating over unjust, you deserve... (laughs) to be disgraced and humiliated. You can, you can rejoice over justice, but you're not allowed to rejoice over injustice. What do we see all over our country? We're supposed to be a nation of laws, and what do we see all over our country? We see people gloating over injustice. Do you think God is for us? May those who aggrandize themselves at my expense be covered with shame and confusion. But may those who delight in my righteousness shout for joy and be glad. See, when we get to that great assembly, not only will we be rejoicing in his presence, but we'll be able to look around us and rejoice in the fact that you and you and you were made righteous and kept righteous. And we're all there. And God gets to hear your praises along with mine. We will be rejoicing over each other's righteousness. Praise God. Let them say always, How great is Adonai! Who delights in what? The peace of his servants. The shalom. That word shalom, it doesn't just mean secession from war and military conflict. It just, it doesn't, it, it just simply doesn't mean you gotta, you're no longer worried about the school bully beating you up. It also speaks of well-being. Peace within your every cell. Peace within your soul. 
peace within your mind. Peace all around you. And peace with your creator, your king. You see, shalom isn't meant to be one-dimensional. Shalom is meant to be every-dimensional. Forgive me for not being eloquent and knowing the word. <laughs> shalom is meant to be all-encompassing. Why? Because it's the gift of God. It's perfect. It's one of those perfect gifts that we will wait for. We don't have it yet, but it's coming. Then, then, my tongue will tell of your righteousness and praise you all day long. When is this going to take place? The great assembly. And people say, I don't know as I want to be just singing praises to God all day long. No, you're not going to just be doing that. You're actually going to get to talk and tell everybody about the greatness of your God. You're going to be able to tell them about his awesome righteousness. That word awesome is no longer going to describe a McChicken. It's going to describe your God, what it was meant for. That word will be redeemed unto him. That day is coming. Beloved, that day is coming. We are closer now than we have ever been. We are one Shabbat closer to it now. Consider that. We are one Shabbat closer to getting to be able to proclaim his righteousness to the great assembly. And you know what? According to all of the signs, it's this group who will see his return. It's this generation, which means that if you are sealed unto God by the Holy Spirit, saved by the grace and mercies of God through Yeshua, it means you were chosen for this time to bear his righteousness, to endure the ragings of the enemy and his soldiers. And you were chosen to do it for such a time as this. My whole life, I'd always think, oh, look at this. I'd be reading something and I'd say, look at this. I wish I could have been born then. I don't do that anymore. I look at the world around me and say, God, I wouldn't have put me here, but I thank you that you did. Please somehow glorify yourself in me and help me to be found faithful. We get to endure to the end. Amen? So tonight is Rosh Hodesh. Tonight, we bring out our Torah scroll. Tonight, we read from it. Tonight, we study and we teach from the parasha. Tonight, we have to address the elephant in the room. And everyone's looking around saying, which one is it? No. <laughs> the elephant in the room. And no. <laughs> My parents in the front row. Uh, would someone please get them a shot of Benadryl, please? Uh, just a wee little glass. <laughs> Tonight, we get to address the elephant in the room, which is when everyone studies Balaam and Bilach, they say, Bilach, the false prophet. No, he wasn't. He was as pagan as you can get. And that should terrify us that God would speak to and through a pagan because we think, oh, God's using me. I think I'm safe. He spoke through a donkey, didn't he? 
you, you look at how he's used some of the preachers and he's spoken through, never mind. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? Before I get in trouble, more trouble. Guys, we are here because we get to worship him. We are here because it's Shabbat and we get to be here. Praise God. Lord, thank you. And that's so hollow and that's not enough, but that's the best we've got is to say thank you. Father, help us to say thank you through obedience to you and your word. Help us to say thank you by putting to death our flesh every stinking day. Help us to say thank you and demonstrate it by seeking to be holy for your namesake. And tonight, Father, help us, anoint us so that our praises will be pleasing to you because apart from your cleaning, apart from your anointing, even our praises are as filthy rags. Unclean. So please, Father, have mercy on us and give us a taste of the great assembly tonight as we worship you. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen.